know me. Like I said, I'm Chris. I work for Yacht Conference. I'm not a game dev. Um, I am a, a self-taught web developer from way back. Um, and uh, I'm in the Sydney Girl Geek community. And this year, as sort of a New Year's resolution, a few of us are doing Harvard's CS50 Intro to Computer Science course. A lot of us who were self-taught and didn't necessarily do CS degrees. So we're going, so we started this just a few weeks ago, the start of January. And um, for those of you who don't know, this is an online course you can do through Harvard. And so... You know, week zero, lecture zero, you watch this lecture, which is basics of programming and stuff. And then your homework for week zero is to make a game in Scratch. Uh, and so, of course, I'm sure you guys know Scratch. Um, but for those who don't, it's a programming language MIT built, um, which they talk about children. But it's used for teaching coding to lots of people who've never programmed anything before. I was aware of it. Um, I've helped out with Girls Programming Network and some of the things teaching kids to code. But I never actually used it myself. So a few weeks back, I started this thinking, I'll just code up something really quick and ended up spending like the entire weekend on it. It was super fun. Uh, and so the other interesting thing is that for 21 years now, let's just scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, 1996. 21 years now, I've had this website uh, dedicated to the children's author, yeah, Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. Um, and so I built this, and it's got heaps of stuff. It's got like trivia quizzes and things like that. And I had a game section, but up until now, it only ever had like some crossword puzzles and crap. But now it has a game, because of course I decided I needed to build a Roald Dahl game in Scratch. Uh, and I decided I was immediately inspired by the book James and the Giant Peach, and specifically these cartoons that a, a woman sent me like 20 years ago to put on the site, which were some il er, illustrations she did back in the day. Um, and specifically this one. So for those of you who don't know James the Giant Peach, basically he's on a giant peach in the water with a bunch of giant bugs and sharks are attaching the peach. And the idea they came up to escape is to use the earthworm as bait to loop every seagull that comes down with spider thread, tie it to the peach stem, and at 501 the whole peach flies up into the sky. So this, was, this is what I thought of when I thought of building a game. So I'm going to switch over to Scratch. So this is my game. So I will play it. I don't know that the sound is going to work, but... Um, Basically, oh, you, hang on, hang on, yeah, yeah, the, there we go, yeah, there's a little bit, uh, I think it's on the other side, oh, you don't really, uh, hang on, hang on, okay, start over, right, so I can move the little James back and forth, and then the seagulls come in, and ah, you gotta catch them, and then it ties it to the peach stem, see, and then, I'll oh, see, but, yeah, uh, and then, okay, so the, so the first thing I did was I got the little cat going back and forth. That's cool. And I learned how to build sprites and change things. I was really happy. Ah, he screams. He does the Wilhelm, you know, the, the, like, the Wilhelm scream and disappears, which is really funny. And then the face goes to a frown. So I built this up iteratively. And I discovered pretty quickly, I saw John's talk last year about game design. And I realized one of the problems I had is this is really not challenging. Like, basically, I have the seagulls appear at a random point in the sky. And then they aim at the worm. And then they fly down. And you could just stand in front of the worm and catch them all. Like, that was really easy. And so I was like, well, what can I do? I can make them smaller. I can make them go faster. I can make more of them. At one point, I had this bird scenario with thousands of seagulls flying in. Uh, so I did a few things. I introduced um, a little bit of randomness that occasionally they'll aim, like for the peach stem, or they'll aim at James himself, you know. Ah. Um, and then also, uh, if you stand in front of the worm, it will actually pop up a little. He'll pop up a little thing. You'll see if I go stand in front of him for a little bit. All right, first catch him. He should say, you're scaring them off. And so they won't come if I stand there too long. So I've got to get away from them a little while. And then every multiple, oh, he's going over there. Every multiple of four points, uh, you get more seagulls. It clones some more of them, so it gets harder and harder. Um, so like I said, I, I, I think this was way hard. Like, all they really wanted me to do was make a game with more than two sprites with a loop. Like, I went way, way overboard um, on, on what it actually, like, I had, like, like, eight sprites, nine sprites, and I had custom, I had messages going back and forth and all kinds of stuff. But it was actually super fun. I learned a ton. Um, uh, some of the other women did, did games as well, some Star Wars games, some shooting things game. I was the only one that made a game where you catch seagulls with an earthworm on a giant peach. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's my first game I've built since school, and it was really fun. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? It's on the Roald Dahl website if you want to go play it. Okay, so I am here to talk about PyWeek. Uh, so PyWeek, for people who haven't heard of it, uh, is a 
annual, twice annual-ish um, programming competition, uh, not even programming competition, um, well, it's a competition, um, where folks basically write a game in Python in a week. Uh, and basically, yeah, the idea is uh, the PyWit community chooses a theme for each challenge. So the last one was they're behind everything. Uh, and you, they, they pick a week that they're going to run it. Uh, and then you start, and then people uh, start it. Uh, and so it, and you get a real mix of folks. Like some folks go, I just want to learn a game. Need to learn to get program games. Need motivation to do it for a week. Uh, and yeah, and, and so people find the case of they've already to they've told themselves, oh, I'm going to write a game, and then, oh, or I'm going to get into games programming, and this can just be an interesting way for them to get into it uh, and spend time on it. Um, and so, yeah, so basically, if you go to the PyWeek website, uh, the time timing for the next one has not been chosen yet. Uh, hopefully, this year sometime. Um, but yeah, so it can be fun to browse through the previous challenges, look at the different themes, see what games people have come up with. Um, there's usually a few featured on the front page, which we're scrolling past there. Um, but yeah, so PyWeek can be a lot of fun. Uh, if you're interested in games programming and open source or learning Python or whatever, uh, check it out. Cool. <laughs> Notice someone opened after John did his uh, thing going, hey, people like to just, you know, open repos on GitHub without licenses. Someone opened an issue on Yarn Spitter going, hey, I notice that uh, developers, somewhat, John said developers tend to just open repos without licenses. This one have a license. And I closed it because, yes, it does. Um, so nice try, but yeah. So where was the repo I was working on? I have way too many repositories. Blah, 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 blah. Is it called Steam Thing? I think I called it Steam Thing. I did call it Steam Thing. Uh, as you can tell, I'm great at naming things. Now, so this came about because I was, don't ever use this code. Oh, God, that's the first important thing. Um, so this came about because I still go to LANs. Like, I think that makes me one of about 15 people, 12 of the other 15 are at the same LAN. I guess that means there's a LAN with two people? Yeah, no, that's still, no, there's still LAN. No, that works. Yeah, okay, I can count. I can also count. Um, so, and what we want to do is we all have Steam games. We all have thousands of Steam games. My library's got about 500 games. I think the average for most of us is about 300. Most of which, of course, we have no intention of playing. We just happen to get them for free with a humble bundle of which we wanted a game. Um, which I'm sure none of you have ever bought a whole bundle of games just for one game, right? That would be mad. No one would ever do that. Um, but the thing is, so we're like, hey, what games do we all have in common? And Steam actually has a helpful, I'm going to helpful in very big inverted, uh, uh, quotation marks on inverted commas there. Um, because it only shows you what one person and another person, we call those two people, Tim, what two people have in common with each other. So you can't go to a whole land and go like, hey, what games do we have in common? So I wrote, hey, I'm meant to be a programmer. I'll write something that does this. So my first thought was, this should be a website. It makes perfect sense to be a website. That way people can just put in their Steam IDs, press enter, pfft, spit out the results. I can't program for the web. I do not know why people mock the web. It's so much harder than literally any other form of programming. Like, every web developer is such a better programmer than me anytime. Um, you actually have to worry about things. I just press compile and a computer tells me when I've screwed up. Um, you actually have to wait. Um, so I instead wrote this thing in Swift really quickly. <laughs> it was terrible. It was awful. But it did work. It would spit out a list of games we all had in common. That wasn't necessarily useful because I think the only game we all had in common was Portal, Portal 2, Half-Life 2, and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, I think, from memory. So we had four games of which technically only one of them was multiplayer. And it was only two people, I think, is Portal 2's multiplayer. And so it wasn't particularly that useful. So I changed it slightly so it goes like, hey, everyone has this game in common. Five players have this game in common, four players have this game in common, so on and so forth. Um, it's still terrible because it turns out all of us have a whole bunch of games that you can't play to land. Like most of us have games that don't actually have this thing called multiplayer. And if you've never been to a land, multiplayer is pretty important. So recently, about a week ago, I made some changes to it, which I haven't pushed up because I think they're probably, well, not they're probably, they're against the terms and services of uh, Steam where I just scraped the website for certain tags. Uh, that did get my IP temporarily banned. Uh, luckily, I don't have a static IP, so I just cycled my connection, got a new IP. I'm good again. But that did mean I added a feature. Uh, that feature was I now cache 
uh, the downloading. So, you know, I'm slowly getting better as this whole, you know, pretend web developer thing's going along. So I now cache the results of that. That led to a new problem, which I actually only discovered yesterday. And I was trying to work on this today a little bit in all the, my copious free time running this. But the biggest problem is, it turns out, according to Valve, there's multiplayer, online multiplayer, co-op, local co-op, split screen co-op, online co-op. There was one more. What was one more? Competitive multiplayer, I think, was the other one. So they've got about 10 tags of which you all have to go. So that's the next step of what I want to do. And then the final step I want to do is I want to find someone from Valve and choke them a little bit because their API is terrible. <laughs> so the reason I started this because I thought this will be easy. This will be a five-second job because their API will say it. It turns out the API, when you ask for game information back, what you get given is you get given the name of the game, a preview of the game, as in a little preview image, and that's it. Um, so that's all the game information you can get back from the Steam API. So what I'm really after is, does anyone know anyone from Valve? <laughs> yes? <laughs> um, yeah, my main point is, I think what we need to be doing more uh, as, well, not game developers here, as people who want to use these game development platforms, or these game platforms like Valve, we really need to start pressuring Valve uh, I'd also need to pressure Origin, uh, EA for Origin. We need to go for Battle.net. Uh, we'd also probably need to go for, what's the Ubisoft one called? Uplay. Uplay. So we're going to need some sort of combined API here to target all of them. So I'm, I'm sort of going to ask all of you. I need all of you, next time you're sitting at home with all your copious free time, you're like, damn, I really just want to be mad on the internet right now. <laughs> I need you to sit down, go to a support page for one of these giant game corporations, write them a quick email going, hi, I really like your thing, but I'd like you to have a better API so Tim can make his less crap thing. So thank you. <laughs> I'd like any information. <laughs> um, and unprepared. Uh, so I'm just going to sort of try and go for it. Um, so a while ago uh, last year and yeah, I think it was mostly that last year. I was um, working on a game, and it's part of my web comic. So, um, I actually made two instances of this game, um, and as you can see, it runs in the browser. Uh, it's basic um, sort of there's a HTML canvas there. It's got some JavaScript going. It's mouse driven. Um, it's got a ducky in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, there's uh, yeah, a bunch of dialogue and so on and so forth. Um, but the way I did this is, um, a, like, a long time, like the original vision for this would be um, I'd maybe run a Mac emulator in JavaScript and upload that to the website. And then that would be kind of like a, a game in an emulator in, in JavaScript, which is sort of in its own sandbox in the browser, which is running in its own isolated process inside your computer. So, you know, see how many kind of layers of turtles I could put into everyone's um, computer that was reading my uh, webcomic. But I didn't have to go that far. Um, when I was making this, I did so um, using the Go programming language, um, but then transpiling it to JavaScript. And you can see the, um, oh, not that URL, GitHub, uh, talks. I think I made, I made a uh, engine here for my uh, silly point and click adventures, um, such as this. And it's in Go, and you basically just um, use go for js to transpile. It's based on another engine called ab10. Um, I could go into the details, but that's basically all I had to say. Um, so crazy stuff like this is possible um, and fairly performant. So um, I optimized this so that it would fit on a phone screen and also still um, function um, reasonably performantly. Um, so you can see this in this uh, sort of dark area, you uh, walk around and um, the map is revealed as you as you walk. No sound, unfortunately, but um, whatever. Uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs>